So some things to think about as we are in Black Friday and in this crazy time of year where consuming is the thing. First of all, I want to remind you of FemFree. This is what me and a bunch of my mutual um, have created this. I'm going to put a link. This doesn't start till December 1st officially, but you can start today. But I just want to point out this one right here, holiday spending and consume. Um, I'm actually going to show you some cool stuff, some great ideas to buy in a second, but let just want to hit on this point. To counter disproportionate spending expectations, women will cut back on excessive holiday purchases. Research shows that women spend up to 30% more on household needs than men. So this, uh, this step promotes financial resilience, especially for black and brown owned spaces. And again, what is the point of this, all of this? To avoid male-centered spaces and enhance women's safety, preserve wealth, and foster greater economic independence for women. This is also about building community. You're gonna feel much more a part of a community if you are putting your money into that community versus, you know, Jeff Bezos or any of those forkers. So I wanna start off with two suggestions from two of my moderators. So um, Melinda Powers, not only is she all of this, fatty lawyer, she also created this course uh, for decentering, not just decentering men, but basically what she calls outsourcing love. So I took this course and um, it doesn't take that long and it's super affordable. And it reminded me of all the things that I have been doing, but I need to start doing again. So this isn't just for somebody who's decentering men or you know who's single or divorced or late bloomer or whatever. This is even for married people, right? Because part of my journey, even though I've been on this decentering men and just kind of like an accidental like for me kind of thing whatever for a while um no matter what 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 condition i'm in whenever what my romantic status um it's really easy to lose myself lose myself in anything not just romantic relationships so this gives like really great tools actionable steps to take to, to the consistent change slow small changes is how you actually change mindsets and really change your life nothing's gonna like that overnight you can read a million books you can listen to a thousand podcasts uh, you can watch all my videos but what do you do um i tell you things to do all the time but this is like a really great like just summarizes it all so well and gives you things to do so melinda's awesome and she's also um if you're watching this on youtube she's one of the the handful of people who's helping keep my page fun and safe and ed an educational place so um check this out or give it to a friend give it to a friend i'm gonna put a link to all this in my caption so i'm not just gonna give suggestions i'm kind of hoping that my suggestions will kind of open your mind about the ways you could spend money this holiday that aligns more with your belief systems because i have been really trying to do this more and more um this is not how i was taught it's very new to me because, you know, I'm cheap and I'm oftentimes fear-based and I'm scarcity mindset stuff. Um, but I have noticed when I actually spend money, uh, put money towards people and towards things that I, I want to support and I believe in, I feel so much better about myself. And I feel like it is, um, it's creating the community that I crave. Where my money and time and energy go is what builds the community I crave. And that's not just in my real life. And I'm going to show some examples from my real life of really cool stuff I've gotten from my community here. Um, but it's, it's on my online community too. I will like maybe never meet some of my closest friends face to face that I've met in my online community. Me and my moderators, we have so much fun. We're having a Christmas party, you know, like, um, and I maybe will never meet them face to face, but it doesn't matter, right? I do want to encourage in, um, in real life community building. That's really essential, but never underestimate the power of online community as well. I think both are great. Second item, totally different too. This is from Erica, one of my mo another one of my moderators. Uh, she is a stay-at-home cat mom of two, and this is her Etsy shop. I'm actually going to post uh, in the community page about this uh, with more photos and a link. But this is just, you know, a sample of some of her stuff. This is all like the perfect kind of stuff that you could get, you know, little the water bottle, sticker, shirt, Christmas ornament, you know, any of this stuff for the holidays, right? Journals, and y'all know my post yesterday, some of y'all didn't see it because the algorithm, but it's one of my favorite posts I've done in a long time about the power of journaling and recording what's going on and then going back and reading it. Woo! Uh, as of right now, she's got 91 uh, stuff, things in her shop. But she can also do things catered to you. Uh, so I'm going to give more information later on. Erica is a stay-at-home cat mom of two. Uh, she is a biracial disabled woman. And she's been one of my moderators for, what, over a year now? So if you are thinking of 
find some cool stuff for the holidays for yourself for other people please check out her shop i've mentioned her stuff before but this is she's got more stuff since then another thing i want to suggest this book my friend rose hackman i had her on my live uh, a couple weeks ago on patreon this is a life-changing book this book helped me understand so much i've read from it before i'm going to show you all uh, on the, on my i'm going to release uh parts of our interview she's actually gonna, coming over to youtube soon um and we'll be building her page there especially because you know we don't know what's happening with tiktok but it probably won't be around long she is a journalist a brilliant author and this is not just about emotional labor of women this is emotional labor that comes with uh across intersections right the how and what does she call it she talks a lot about the editing work of emotional labor and instead of calling it women's intuition um she she calls it subordinate intuition that blew my mind. We talked about that on the live. Again, if you want to support my work or you want to give my, my Patreon to somebody as a gift, uh, I think I may try to figure out a way you could do that. I don't know. I got to look into it, y'all. I will update with you that. But maybe I'll have a special for the holidays. I'm not sure. But uh, I love my lives. It's one of my favorite things I've started doing. And she talks about subordination, uh, intuition, and how whether it's, um, you know, a, an intern with a big scary boss or if women every time we're around men who could unalive us, um, the way that anybody who's having a mask, right? Because of uh, racism, uh, transphobia, homophobia, like any of the isms, any of the terrible things, anybody who has less power has to do a lot of emotional labor. She covers that in this book, the history of that in the United States, especially. Um, it is a brilliant, brilliant book. This is one of the best books I've ever read. And it really changed how I thought of the world, but it also helped me understand and appreciate my own labor and the labor of people in my life and what they're doing on a regular basis. Okay, here's another Patreon idea. This is for anyone, really, but any white women who follow me who've been asking me how to unpack this stuff, because we know that uh, patriarchy is intricately tied to white supremacy culture and trying to understand how this all plays out and how we are being used in this system to uh, perpetuate m uh, white men's violence and them controlling and hoarding all the wealth. Um, white Wood Wisp is not only one of the funniest people I've ever met, uh, she is brilliant and she has created this amazing community for, uh, for people to unpack this stuff together. Uh, every time I watch one of her videos and she has some of them behind, um, you know, and it's affordable. There's different tiers. I think $5 is the che cheapest tier. There's even a free tier. Um, every single video, throughout the video, I'm like, Poof, and I like take notes because the, like she comes up with so many amazing terms too. And she also has a, um, a podcast uh, that's also on YouTube, on YouTube called Hey White Women. And that's with a uh, knitting cult lady. Uh, Daniela wrote the book um, Uncultured, I also had on live and I will release parts of that too. I'm so behind on my lives. I, I don't know how to edit. <laughs> I'm teaching myself how to edit this stuff. Um, so anyway, uh, White Women Whisperer is truly a treasure. Amazing story, amazing thought leader. And um, she should be paid for this work. She's, and she also got demonetized on TikTok with like, she had uh, like 500 and something thousand followers, I think got demonetized because white women came and were so triggered by one of her videos and they got her demonetized. So if you wanna help her so, so keep doing this amazing work, follow her Patreon. I've also mentioned Tam and her empathy scorecard. Um, I'm gonna talk more about Tammy because I'm gonna have her on a live. She has changed my life in terms of really, um, really tapping into empathy on so many levels that I didn't know how to, especially empathy with myself. Because the more, less violent I am towards myself, the less violent I'm gonna be out in the world, right? So, um, another great place to start. Oh my God, look at <laughs> Look at those lips. <laughs> Somebody once told me I should stop being so distracted by my, my dog and stop talking to them. Um, I don't care. I'm gonna keep doing it. I get unsolicited feedback all the time. Anyway, I try to like, um, you know, show things throughout this month. Promote Femfree. Again, I'll talk more about Femfrees later on. It doesn't officially start to December first, but come on. I mean, we can start today. <laughs> we can start. But it's more of a mindset, and it takes a while to get used to. That. I can't tell you how easily I am to just jump to help a man or even pay for men's stuff, which is crazy. They've convinced us that they pay for everything, and I can't tell you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the one who has. I am so in debt because of men. I can't even tell you. How many men I have helped or enabled or um, trusted. You know, one of the reasons why I'm so in debt right now is because a man that I hired to edit a book, a book proposal, 
Um, $10,000. Book didn't sell. I had blurbs from Elizabeth Gilbert. Like, I'm not blaming it on him, but this man taught me, t t convinced me that he was an expert and he blah, blah. And then um, uh, he told me to not write um, about being stalked or any of my grapes and all that stuff because that was unrelatable. And my dumb ass was like, okay, he knows what he's talking about. No. So anyway, I just, when I start to think of all the reasons why I don't have the money that like my work, you know, I've done really great work. But I haven't, but I, I'm like, where is all, like, how am I still so unfinancially unstable relative to my, I'm 47. You know what I mean? Um, and when I think about it first, it's plug in the holes, plug in the holes of free labor, time wasting. Um, you know, that's why I, I have moderators to help me moderate my page. Um, because I don't want y'all wasting your time arguing with men who don't care who don't care. They literally want to waste your time. So anyway, I try to live through example. So I'm trying to show all the things that I've been investing my money and time and energy into um, in hopes of kind of spreading that that spirit, right? Now, Femme Freeze is about a lot of other things, including your online stuff, where you uh, go out and stuff like that. But just for like the consumerism part, I'm going to show you some other stuff. Now, here's some fun local stuff that I got. Okay, so it may seem like, oh, I can't afford stuff from local artists because it's so much cheaper on Amazon or whatever. But let me tell you something. As I've been realizing, one of the things, especially now, <laughs> is that the first people they attack are journalists and artists because journalists and artists are the people who, and, and you know, writers, um, whether, wh whatever. It's the artists that are usually, whenever you go, whenever I, when I was a history major, the thing we always studied was art because art told you what was really happening during that moment. The first thing they attack are artists and journalists. Journalists are actually usually the first, first people, which is already happening. So even when we, um, so we went to, uh, to my sister married a, a, a Greek guy. Oh, he's Greek American, but his family is like Greek, Greek, Greek. Um, so we met them in Greece. And before I left, I was like, oh, whatever. I'm going to get cheap stuff at the, wait, whatever. I can get stuff at the airport or whatever or in Athens. But you know what? I didn't. I didn't because I'm like, well, that stuff isn't even made here. And I, you know, like any place that is a big tourist destination, usually the people who live there are really suffering a lot. Cost of living. And so sometimes the only thing that they can live on is um, the artists like selling their stuff, even though there's knockoffs everywhere. So like this was, so um, I'm trying to start the tradition of buying Christmas ornaments um, to tell the story of our life. So we bought a Christmas, uh, y'all, I'm obsessed with donkeys. You know that, right? <laughs> You, you know that from so the, this ornament <laughs> this was only like five bucks too um a donkey journal <laughs> um like look at this um all these postcards was from the artist look at all these beautiful postcards i think these were like i don't know like five bucks but they're you know i'm not sending them anywhere i'm gonna put them in my room but look at this all local artists and then of course <laughs> donkey um <laughs> whatever you call it um where you put your cup on it so i got all that stuff um i really hope i ha i think i have her instagram i'm gonna try to tag her i'll try to tag her i mean not not to get you to go necessarily buy anything from her but just in case in case um this was in um Philandros, the, the island um and this is where my uh yeah my 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 brother-in-law um yeah grew up uh in the summer so he got to it's actually cheaper for us to go visit my family when they go visit greece than to fly back to the U. i hope i hope we're gonna go back this summer by the way uh hope 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 we'll see i haven't seen my mom in almost four years <laughs> speaking of christmas ornaments i want to show this one so this this was made by a trans artist um cute little christmas ornament um i'm going to tag them in my um caption or whatever i went to this really cool trans art festival it was like a week long and they had a little booth where they were selling stuff and i had some really great conversation so this is on our tree now see we have it it's at the very tippy top of our christmas tree i'm so i i'm so glad that i'm doing this now but for the last several years we've had a tree with just balls because we don't really have anything meaningful and i was like okay from now on like when we travel, like even if it's just like, you know, something silly like this, just a donkey, just, I want a, like a Christmas tree to mean something to me. That's like, a, you know, as a storyteller, I want the, the tree to tell a story. So this is the artist that I bought that from. Um, and he has all kinds of really cool stuff. 
This is the festival that I saw it at. Uh, this is it in French. This was such a cool experience. So if you're if you live in France and you want to come to this, at, if, I don't know, maybe it's like once a year. Festival Art et Création Tram. But I think there's a liaison here, so it's Art et Ugh, whatever. God, this language is hard. Uh, another cool artist that I met. Um, this is her Instagram. I've mentioned her before because I ran into her. Uh, she they she had a booth like just down the street from me at this kind of like you know arts uh, creator festival kind of thing. Um, this is her if you want her information. She makes all these cool designs. It's hard to see. She has a book. This is her. She's amazing. We were in a drum club together. I didn't. I was just looking at her stuff, and she was like, "Melody." And she's her hair's changed since then. I was like, "Oh my god, I haven't seen her since uh, the pandemic." <laughs> like, because that drum club dissolved, and I haven't seen her since. And she's amazing. So I'm so glad we reconnected. And then I was like, "Oh my god, I buy. I gotta buy some of your stuff." Um, because you know, I'm always trying to decorate my room with things that mean stuff to me, but also to support artists. Without people supporting artists, the platforms, corporations, none of them are gonna support us. It's it's it, this is a community spirit. So she has all this cool stuff. I loved this, this tree. I, I love this one so much. Uh, I was Princess Leia for Christmas one, or Halloween one year. So I bought two of her cards. Um, look at these beautiful cards. Sorry if the, there's still plastic on it because I don't trust myself to not destroy it. Um, look at that. And then here's another one. I think I bought a third one, but I think it's on my wall. Hold on. Whatever. Anyway, um, you know, the thing is, is that... Um, Never underestimate the power of something that makes you just feel good every time you see it. The, before I go into some more of these cool stuff that I have, um, also never underestimate the power of something that doesn't represent you being in your space and making you feel bad about yourself. Um, one example is uh, for our for our wedding, a friend tried to give me a plant, but it was like a tree. It was way too big. It would have taken up you know ha like a whole corner of our room. And um, we went to pick it up and it was like, I was like, I don't want that. And I almost took it to make not make her feel bad. And then I realized every time I look at this thing that is just really not us and it's not me and I don't really want it. I appreciate the, the thought. Every time I see that, I'm gonna think self-abandonment. <laughs> I didn't want it. It didn't reflect something that I wanted. It's, it's, it's not something I would do. So anyway, not only in terms of like the things that I'm surrounded by, I look at it, it makes me feel good. You know what I mean? how I, I've been really, really trying to focus how I spend my money really does impact my community, um, my friends, my, my everything, um, the world at large, but myself and how I feel about myself. You know, especially once I saw all the things that I was leaking, all these subscriptions to like, I don't ever watch Hulu. Why was I paying for Hulu? I haven't watched it in a year, even though it's my job to watch TV and movies. You know what I mean? Like, that's a dumb example, but there's so many things that I'm like, why am I spending money on this, but not $5 a month for someone who's literally teaching me how I, how I look at the world differently. You know what I mean? Um, so that's why I started following some of my favorite creators on Patreon and boosting their work, sharing their work, stuff like that. You know, it's just, it's just, a, it's a mindset and it takes a while. I'm still like learning it because I still have this deprivation, individualist, capitalist, hyper-capitalist mindset. By the way, um, so we got a local uh, place did this. It, like, <laughs> um, I've been pushed to do merch. Eric, Erica actually offered to help me do merch because I just don't know how to figure this out. I don't know how to do the time and maybe, I, I don't know, whatever. But like every time I look at this cup of my little baby um, being ridiculous, like look at the shade in that, you know? <laughs> That's his face usually and this is him when he sleeps. Um, it makes me laugh. So at least two or three times a day, I laugh just because of this. It's not because of consumerism, but it's because it's like something that means something to me rather than some like freaking Ikea crap. Also, I just saw this. I totally forgot. This is one of my favorite things uh, that Erica has in her shop. <laughs> I just love this cat. Just a few more facts before I show you my final thing. That's like show and tell right now. This is what men are doing and this is what women are doing. The ideological divide is emerging between young men and women in many countries. South Korea, the US, Germany, the UK, and many more, I'm sure. This is where we're heading. So do you really want to give money to men who are doing this? Becoming more and more conservative, more and more, like, they're going to become more violent, more entitled, and start, you know what I mean? Or do you want to invest in your community? 
of women and femmes who are going to take care of each other uh, while this stuff sorts itself out. Again, I don't necessarily think this is a bad thing. I think this is extinction burst. All these men are going to get down here and be like, but who's going to do all this labor if no one will date me? How do I take care of myself? Oh, maybe I have to change. I don't know. Anyway, 75% of the world's unpaid labor is done by women. I would suggest not doing all that for men anymore. We are 92 years from achieving gender equality and unpaid care labor. We may be farther than that, <laughs> given how things are going to keep going. 46% of American moms in heterosexual relationships say that their husbands make them more stressed than their own children. So we may be seeing more divorces happen. Well, unless they uh, outlaw that, which they want to with Project 25, 2025. 90.4% of, uh, of um, mothers uh, surveyed said that they take better care of their families than themselves. We need to reverse this. This, this is not okay. And part of taking care of yourself is not just going to the doctor, feeding yourself well. It is, and I, I know that you have to do whatever you have to for children, okay? But um, single moms work less than a lot of married moms because a lot of men create more work for these moms than their own children do. And finally, 11, every day, 11 billion hours of unpaid work are done by women every day. So I'm gonna, I've tried to, to incorporate more cool ideas of how you can support community and build, put your money w in, in, into things that you believe in and people you believe in instead of it just being, you know, uh, because, you know, I talk about not enabling men. Well, we enable men with our money and our labor. So finally, I wanna show this because this is one of the coolest things I've ever bought. Oh, I also bought this from uh, Sarah, who I bought this from, amazing artist. So I wanna show this, and this may seem like, what? Okay, so. <laughs> so I met this artist at the, the Trans Art Festival. And I was so intrigued by this because at first I was like, ooh, why would I buy this? Even though they're kind of cute, I was like, oh, like we need more of these. Like, look at this, look at this. And then I want to read what this artist said. Now, this is the English version of it. So this is, it was probably written way better in French. This is like a terrible translation here. And Nina's is not just an orphan. We have to end with the hung guys, the male guys, the, the gun guys. It's not a powerful stick destined to, destined to sow its DNA everywhere to rearm demographically. No. This is a body cave, a soft body. It's flabby. Sometimes it's hard, but mostly it's hanging. And Hines can be sweet, round, precious. A beat, <laughs> that's the French word, can be worn out with lace. It can be tied around the thighs or under a belly. It is like the ears, a sensory organ. That could be he, her, he, they. Let's accept that the is plural. It does not have to be erotic. It doesn't have to be the devilish. It can be sweet, silly, cute, and tender. So I had such an amazing conversation with this artist. And like it comes in these cute boxes, these gold boxes. Uh, like, look at that. <laughs> There's even, you know, look at the, the boob earring. It obviously comes in different colors too. And what I also loved is this artist had the, the price of, you know, what the actual labor it cost. And then there was the price for people who make, who make bare minimum wage. Um, and like there, there was like a sliding scale, a sliding scale for their art. And you know what I really loved about that, which may be weird that I'm talking about this right now, but like this idea that this you know, because they were telling me, they were like, you know, I love the idea. I wanted to crochet because it makes you think of like, and it, you know, sweet um, grandma, you know, like it's soft, it's fabric. It's, it's not, it doesn't have to be something we associate with violence and, and, and you know, it can, it's, it's, he, they're like, it, it, it was just, it's just like an ear, a nose. It's just part of the body that doesn't have to be so violent and so strong it can literally just be relaxed laying there it's just a part of the body and i was like you know what i love this i love this reframing i i love this reframing i ha i think about this all the time because of this art i'm like you know what so that's another reason why i do not allow like um you know turf you know anti-trans comments uh in my page because bioessentialism is not going to get us anywhere <laughs> we are 
we know that if they start trying to say that, you know, uh, they want to inspect people's private parts before they go into the bathroom, who's to say they're not going to do that? I mean, they could do that to me if I cut my hair. Oh, are you a man? Maybe you're a man. You know what I mean? So like none of this, that, that is not the direction we're going here. It's not going to get us anywhere. Bioessentialism, men are not born to be evil. They are capable of being soft and sweet and gentle and kind. Just because they don't have a long track record of doing that collectively doesn't mean they can't. Because if they can't, that means they won't. They have no reason to change. Um, and I refuse to live in a world where we just give up and say, okay, well, just keep doing all what you're doing because you're not capable of anything. like That is, no, that is not the world I want to live in. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my little, I don't ever do shopping content on my page. But you know what? Um, given tis the season, um, we know that, you know, like, Gifts are really great to do, but it's the intention behind it, the spirit behind it, who we're supporting. Um, I'm sure I'll come up with a lot of ideas as soon as I end this. So uh, anyway, I'm going to put links to all this in the caption. Please go check it out. And uh, even if you can't afford a tier on my Patreon, please follow it anyway in the free tier so you can keep up with my work in case the algorithm, you know, d d d doesn't send my stuff to you. You won't forget I exist, uh, especially if you really enjoy my content because the algorithm really does make me forget people exist. And I hate that. I hate that. Um, I'm also going to start doing watch parties on my Patreon. Um, so, so we can just watch some stuff together. I'm also thinking of doing some content where people, I can just record something on a live and I can, and people can comment and, I, and like, as I'm making this stuff, because I really want to like involve people more in my stuff, you know, as a, as a, as a writer, storyteller, artist, like I do this all by myself and I, and I learn from y'all's comments so much and I appreciate your comments so much and I incorporate them into my work sometimes, but I would love to just like actually in, live incorporate that in. So I don't know. I'm thinking all kinds of things, but I love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, um, thanks for being here and let me know if you heard that comment song. Welcome to the Kelmet song. This is what I ate last night. Brussels sprouts. Then they cooked them for me because I don't cook. Love that for me. And buy some roasted Brussels sprouts and some sweet potatoes. Those are my favorite, favorite, favorite things. And I don't even know how to use the oven. Doesn't that great for me? Then we put up the tree, the tree. The trees here in France are kind of tiny, although it looks big in this photo of him walking at home from the grocery store. Anyway, this is decorating, decorating. Um, yeah, it's kind of boring tree, except my new ornaments, ornaments. Also, they don't have water for the tree, so it dies super fast. It's in a log. Doesn't make any sense to me, but that's how they do it here. Look at Moe, look at Moe, look at Moe, so, so stressed out about literally everything, always. That's my baby, stressed out dog, even though I know he seems chill. <laughs> the comment song, he thinks he's a lap dog, lap dog. <laughs> anyway, but he's actually kind of a diva, because as soon as he noticed he was getting photographed, he's like, no, where to take the phone off, camera away. Anyway, anyway, the comment song. I hope you enjoyed this. I do it every time and it's really random. Anyway, et voila, let me know if you heard the Brussels sprout comment song.